Hey there, it's John with Heroes and Legends, and I have another top 10 list for you today. Today we're going to look at the top 10 blue cards we would like to see reprinted in Eternal Masters. Now, as you could guess, this is going to be a whole series. We're going to look at every single color. Most recently, a couple days ago, we looked at white, and this is our second video in the series looking at the blue cards. Now, in case you missed that first video, the criteria we used was twofold. We looked at the current value in the secondary market of some of these cards, cards that we'd like to see reprinted so that players can actually afford to play with them. Imagine that. <laughs> and secondly, we looked for cards that just get played a lot. And it could be any of the Eternal formats, including Vintage, Legacy, Commander, Cubes, Highlander, you name it. Anything that's an Eternal format is kind of what we tried to take into account anyway. Uh, modern, technically not an Eternal format. However, all things being equal, at times a card may slip in because it also sees Modern play too. Now, having said that, let's look at the Honorable Mentions. And I'll tell you one thing. Look at these Honorable mentions i mean they're stacked <laughs> blue is going to be the hardest color to really narrow down a top 10 just because blue has some of the most crazy cards in the history of magic and when you look at these cards here on this page i mean counterbalance is a huge part of legacy and vintage for many many years since it came out in cold snap it's been a huge part of decks such as standstill and countertop forever now true name nemesis only was printed one time in a commander product desperately needs a reprinting obviously a fantastic card on its own but also even better in Merfolk decks. Cutting Wish, big key player in Storm as well as some other decks. Omniscience, again, another card that actually has a legacy deck named after it with Omnitel. So look at those honorable mentions, incredible. So what is our top 10? Well, let's jump in. And one last note before we start, just like the last top 10, we won't see any reserve list cards in here since we know, unfortunately, <laughs> there is a reserve list and they won't be printed in Eternal Masters. Now coming in at number 10, we have Venser Shaper Savant. And this is a Future Sight card. Future Sight cards, a lot of them tended to be really good and really spendy. This one's no exception. And this will run you about $17 now. Now, what I really like about Venser and why I really like to see it reprint and just get more copies out there is it's just a huge cube and commander staple. It just Let's you do crazy things that most cards don't let you do. The fact that you can return a spell to the, its owner's hand lets you take spells off the stack and basically put them back in their owner's hand. That's crazy. You don't see that every day. I like the card. It's fun. I like to play with it. And I think it would be also a nice inclusion in the limited game for Eternal Masters. Number nine is Pact of Negation. Another future site rare, go figure. And this one's going to run you about $28 or so. And Pact of Negation, other than Force of Will, is just another one of those great zero casting cost counterspell cards that you can really surprise your opponent with. Also works very well in the Hive decks that potentially you could counterspell and force your opponent to cast their own Pact of Negation, which could make them lose the game on their next upkeep. So this continues to see play. It will continue to see play for quite some time. Might as well just reprint it again. <laughs> Number eight, Vendillion Click. Now, this one, we've seen a couple reprints of the Click recently. Most recently, Modern Masters 2015, which is about less than a year ago at this point. Now, this is still a $35 card, even with all the reprints, and it's just because it still sees an amazing amount of play. So as much as it's maybe not as exciting as some of the other cards on the list because we have seen it in the not too distant past, I still think we need more of these copies to get out into players' hands. So it did crack the top eight. Number seven, Ancestral Vision. Now, this particular one we're featuring is the dual deck version, but of course this was also in Time Spiral. Either version is gonna cost you easily over $40, usually between $45, $47. Now, this recently spiked because it was unbanned in Modern. However, still a card that shines in Cubes, shines in Legacy. Anytime you can cascade into a card like this, it's pretty amazing. Uh, so it's seen a lot of play. It will continue to see play. And especially with the extra buff to it, to, due to the fact that Modern players want this now too, I think it's time to get some more copies out there. Number six, Show and Tell. I've already mentioned the Omni Tell deck. There's also a little deck called Sneak and Show you may have heard of, and this deck helps fuel those style of decks. And coming in at $56.23, I mean, four of these can get quite spendy quite quick. <laughs> so Show and Tell, it's amazingly enough, one of these amazing rares from Urza Saga that is not on the reserve list, and it would be really awesome to see this included, I mean, obviously it'd probably be a mythic rare, but in Eternal Masters. 
Number five is Flusterstorm, and this card recently broke the $60 mark. Again, here's a card that really has only seen print in a Commander product. This was actually in one of the original Commander products, so it's getting a little bit old now, too. And this is a card that just sees tons of play, Vintage, Legacy. It's a great way to protect you against Storm strategies, and just because of that, I think it's a card that almost needs more printings out there so players can put these in their sideboard or include them in their cubes to deal with a storm mechanic and have an answer for it uh, so this is desperately needs a reprint and let's face it this is, shouldn't be a $60 card I mean it's only a $60 card because of its rarity at this point this is a card that just needs another printing and hopefully make it affordable for players Number four, speaking of cards that have broken the $60 mark, Snapcaster Mage. It's not a whole lot I can say about this that hasn't been said in the past. I mean, this is a card that's played everywhere, everywhere. I'm a little surprised it's still only $60, quite honestly. Now, it's recently seen a regional PTQ promo printing, uh, but really that's not going to do much to affect the availability or the price of this card. So it'd be nice to see it show up in Eternal Masters, maybe keep it from becoming a $100 card in another few months. <laughs> Number three is Force of Will. Now, when Eternal Masters was originally announced a few months back, Force of Will, as well as Wasteland, were announced as two of the cards that will be included in the set. So this will be in Eternal Masters, and we're very happy for it. Wizards, you got this one right. Now, right now, this is an $80 card. This was an Alliance Uncommon. Uh, in fact, if it wasn't already announced that it was going to be reprinted, it probably would be higher. I would say this probably would be a $90 card at this point, uh, which would have probably also made it higher on our list. <laughs> but at the same time, this needs desperately to be reprinted. This card is a card that really really makes the legacy and the vintage formats a thing. They prevent at least some of the turn one, turn two kills, and just slow down the format a little bit. You really have to think about when you're going to go for the win, when your deck's going to go off, because your opponent may be holding a force of will, and it really changes the whole landscape. You could argue that Modern really needs a card like Force of Will to start slowing down its landscape, considering Modern has become faster and faster, and it seems like the only way to control it is with bannings, which isn't a whole lot of fun, but having a card like Force of Will, I don't know, might make Modern a little easier to control without banning certain cards as often. Uh, so anyway, that's the story for another day, but thanks Wizards, we're happy to have Force of Will coming. Number two, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Now, Jace has been kind of the face of magic in recent history. It used to be Black Lotus, but when the Power Nine just got so outpriced where nobody can really afford to get one or really dream of getting a Lotus anymore, um, Jace kind of became the new face of magic. And it's just one of those cards that captures the imagination. It's got amazing art. It's in a Planeswalker with four abilities. They're very powerful abilities. This is a card that's banned in modern, sees a lot of play in legacy, sees play in vintage. This is an awesome cube card. Just a really nice card to be able to slide into your cube and just be able to do some degenerate things with. And you can even argue that maybe Jace isn't even as powerful as he used to be considering the landscape's changed. There's more ways to get rid of Planeswalkers, so on and so forth. However, it's still an amazing card. It's really cool. It still costs over $80, even for the From the Vault 20 version. And it hasn't seen a lot of printings other than From the Vault 20 and its original printing in World Wake. It'd be nice to get some more Jaces out there. Finally, number one is Mana Drain. Now, <laughs> Mana Drain over $200. This was a uncommon in Legends. It recently saw a Judges promo printing. However, that's really not enough for it to make a difference for most players. Uh, this card desperately needs to be reprinted. Now, this is a card that's been banned in many formats over the years, but still playable, obviously, in Vintage. This is a fun card to slide into your cube again. There's just a lot of practical purpose for it. And if you've never played with it, yes, it is extremely powerful. It's an extremely powerful card. One other interesting side note is the Legends booster box correlation was really weird in that half of the uncommons would not show up in a booster box. So if you got the booster box that had the half of the uncommons that had mana drain in it well congratulations you're going to value town if you get a booster box that doesn't have that half of the uncommons in it then you get no mana drains which is a little awkward too uh all of it kind of just is part of the lore and mystique of this card and it'd be really cool to see it printed obviously with some new art i'm sure it would have new art if they brought it back and yeah it'd be really awesome hey even the judges uh, promo art actually looks really cool so uh yeah i hope we see it uh 
It's a very pricey, spendy card. It'd be nice to be able to play with this one again. So having said that, hey, those are all the blue cards that we really want to see in Eternal Master. So let me know in the comments below your thoughts. What did we miss? What are some blue cards that you'd like to see in there that maybe we didn't get a chance to talk about? Again, there's so many blue cards. It's really hard to narrow them down to 10 and just four honorable mentions. I probably could have done a top 25 or 30 with blue cards. <laughs> um, but uh, let me know your thoughts. Until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. This video, like all my videos, was made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Even a donation of a dollar helps me to keep growing this community and creating better quality videos for all of you. Check out our Patreon page for exclusive giveaways and future goals for the channel. If you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, product openings, or finance videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a good day.